this is for anyone interested in sales techniques. I want to learn from someone who implements them every day. So today we have Brian Greenfader, who's a top performing account executive at PandaDoc. So Brian, if you want to give us a quick story on where you came from and how you got to PandaDoc. Yeah, of course. Um, thanks, Andrew. Um, so I first started off at this company called Envisum. It was a MarTech company, um, marketing technology, and really any type of technology really always had my attention. So after that, I transitioned to a company called Blue Leads. It's an inbound HubSpot marketing agency. And then about a year ago, I found my way over at PandaDoc. Thanks, man. Awesome. So uh, we're going to go over some sales techniques today. We know you're the expert. Um, first thing I want to hear about is how do you start a conversation with a prospect? And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking specifically in terms of like voice and inflection tone. Like what are you aiming for mm -hmm. with that? And, and how, do you, um, how do you sort of get really specific with what you're doing in your voice to make them do something you want them to do? Yeah, of course. So when I start off all my calls, I try to come in with a lot of energy. Um, I want them to try to mirror my energy. So if I come in all excited and ready to talk to them, my goal is to get them to feel the same way. When I, my philosophy is like, no one wants to talk to someone that's miserable. So if you sound monotone and you sound like you hate your job and you hate your life, no one's going to want to buy from you. So when I start my calls, I try to come in with a lot of excitement. So they realize like, okay, this is going to be a fun call. And normally I'll try to like make some bad dad joke in the beginning, try to get them to laugh. And like, I'll even call it out like, hey, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to solve what you need, but like, we're going to have some fun today. And then I get into my call. Can you give us an example of that energy? Like right now? Yeah, of course, Brandy. So thanks so much for jumping on the line with me today. I know it's uh, 10, 15. Does that still work for you? Yeah, it's great. Do you do the lean forward thing too? Is that on purpose? It is. Um, I learned that from one of my old mentors, uh, Mac McAvoy, a while ago, that if you just lean into it subconsciously, they feel like you're talking directly to them. Um, as well as like, I feel like if I'm just sitting back, it's hard for me to have this energy. But if I come at you like this and lean forward, I'm able to project better. Yeah, like man. That. That's a good tip. So during that call, like when it's time to go over like next steps or just formatting demo in general, where do you go from there? Yeah, of course. So taking it from the top to format the demo, I kind of let them take the lead on that. I know what I need to cover on each call, but the way I look at it, I could try to put them in a box into my selling process. But at the end of the day, every company has their own buying process. So how I start off my calls is like, I'll start off coming in with a lot of energy and so I say like, Hey, Andrew, it's Brian over at PandaDoc. Thanks so much for jumping on the line with me. Um, is this still a good time for you? Sure. Awesome. So I know we have this meeting scheduled for 30 minutes. Is that still one? Does that still work for you? I want to respect your calendar. Yeah, it works with me. Okay, cool. Perfect. So on this call, Andrew, help me understand like what's going to make this a successful call for you. And I start my calls off that way. So I want them to tell me what they need to hear in order for them to consider this a successful call and for them to want to continue the conversation with Panda Dog. Okay. So it's kind of like setting an agenda for them, but you're kind of putting the ball in their court at first just to, just to roll with that. Correct. Because depending on who they are, they might care about different, different things where in terms of like, let's say if you come from a tech background, you might be the CTO at your company. You're going to, you're going to be asking more technical questions than if you're, let's say the CMO at your company. So I kind of let them take the lead in terms of what they want to hear. And then I still know at the end of the day, okay, I need to cover X, Y, Z, but let me gear my conversation towards what they want. And then in between me answering me getting what I need as well. Okay. Does that make sense? So it does. Yeah. I, I like that because I, uh, someone who used to be a closer as well, I don't think there's like a one size fits all approach but the way you go about that approach is kind of general. So it could change like person by person, like you said, different industries. Um, because if you take the same approach as someone who works in software versus someone who you know runs a mom and pop shop, it's gonna be a different call. So 
Um, I like that you change up your approach and kind of give them the agenda. Uh, I think it just makes them a little more comfortable. It also helps me out. If I'm on eight calls a day, like I don't want to say the same thing over and over again. If that's the case, might as well record my first call and just send it to them. So that way it helps <laughs> yeah. me stay on my toes and have different conversations. And that's one thing I love about working over at PandaDoc is no two calls are ever the same. Yeah, sure. kind of going along with that, um, do you take notes at the beginning of the call or are you able to remember that information and, and steer the rest of the call without you know having to refer back? Yeah, so I'll, I take notes a lot, um, but in between that, I'll ask them questions and to help me remember, especially if someone's talking really fast, I might not be able to catch everything. So I'll ask like, hey, Brandy, just to clarify, you mentioned blah, blah, blah. That gives me time to think about what you just said and write it down, as well as to clarify like, oh, that's actually what you said. And that's actually how I handle my next steps at the end of the call. If you're in a 45 minute call, 30 minute call, hour call, there's a lot of information said and any salesperson knows once they're in the zone, they're in the zone and they're just going. So a lot of times when I first started out in sales, I would forget what I told them the next steps would be. And like, normally I have to find out information and normally they have to find out information. So what I've been doing recently is assigning them homework. So I'll say like, Hey, Brandy, um, before our next call, Swans are assigned both of us homework and hold us both accountable. I know you need to talk to your marketing team to see blah, blah, blah. And I know you need to talk to your tech team to see blah, blah, blah. In return, I also need to handle whatever it is. That way I'm assigning both parties homework. So I remember to do it as well as at the end of the call, I want that to be the last thing that he or she hears is okay, before next steps or before our next call, I need to go to my team and get X, Y, Z. So next time I talk to Brian, we're able to have that conversation. That's brilliant because it also makes them feel heard and listened to, which is kind of your goal and like in, in the most genuine way, you know? Um, so they know that, you know, this, this call, this last 30 minutes, you were really paying attention. You're going to help them through this process because they might be a little overwhelmed or confused or, and then, yeah, you're sort of prescribing them so that they can move forward and feel confident, like allowing you to guide them because you listened to them and they trust you. Correct. And also what I do, depending on this, depending on the time, either at the end of the first call or the beginning of the next call, I'll say like, Hey, Brandy, before we get started, do you mind if I just read back my notes? I want to make sure. I didn't miss anything and I want to make sure that all of my information is accurate about Brandy Inc. Uh, so I'm able to give you the correct information. And then I'll read back everything and I'll ask like, hey, did I miss anything or is anything incorrect? And if they say no, then I'll start continuing. If they say, yeah, it's actually X, Y, Z, I'll apologize. I'll write that down and we'll just continue talking. And you think nice. that's probably like an effective way to retouch on their pain points as you go down like what you covered on the agenda it is i don't it is i don't want to just say like hey andrew your pain is xyz so i'll right. go through everything and sprinkle that in as well as it's just a way to reinforce like you came to me because you're trying to solve xyz gotcha so if i'm on a call with you right and i'm sure this happens to all salespeople probably frequently. I know I dealt with it. Um, you're just not getting a lot out of me. Of course, one of the key things is asking the right questions. So if I'm, I'm on a call with you, I'm the prospect, you're basically getting nothing out of me. How do you go about that? So there's a few ways to do that. A, don't ask open or don't ask closed end questions, ask open ended questions so they can't just say yes or no. Um, as a salesperson, and I'm sure you've dealt with this, when people are just saying yes or no and just giving you one word answers, internally, you're just thinking like, okay, I might as well just hang up right now. You're not going to give me any information. I'm not going to learn anything about you. I'm not even going to figure out if our software could, or our solution could help you out. We might as well just end this conversation. But obviously, you don't want to do that. So asking open-ended questions is a great way to do that, as well as mirroring 
which is just repeating back what they said. Human nature, the recipient wants to explain themselves. So if you say a statement, if I just say the exact statement back to you with a voice inflection, like it's a question, I'll get you to be able to explain. So speaking of mirroring, um, the man a little surprise, yeah, a little surprise guest here to, to help us cover that. Welcome, yeah. Patrick. <laughs> there we go. And it begins. So Brian was just telling us we were going over asking the right questions on a call and he brought up mirroring. And uh, last week we talked about how you guys uh, took me out to dinner at that Italian restaurant and pretty much ruined my night. And that was maybe January. And I'm, it's now August. I'm still feeling it. So um, <laughs> I'll let you guys take over. I'm, I'm going to keep my mouth shut here. I can't do this again. Take it away, Patrick. Just, well, I just remember almost falling off a scooter right before that. that. That was the most traumatic part of my night. And I think I just took it out on you, Andy, and just, just ruined your life in that moment. But I mean, what did we do, Brian? Did we just mirror him for like three hours? Yeah, so I think it was after yeah. the lightning game. We went out to grab food and you introduced mirroring to him and his mind was blown. And then throughout the entire dinner, everything he said, we just mirrored him and he just couldn't stand it. Well, we, we were talking at first, we said we wanted to keep work conversations at a dinner. And then next thing you know, you guys are mirroring me. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, not a, it's not a work conversation, Andy. It's just fucking with you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's fair. Those are two different things. Yeah. yeah. Brian, don't you use mirroring on your girlfriend to ruin her life as well? Oh, fiance. She's, she's going to watch this video. Um, no, I've never done that, but if she's not <laughs> going to watch this video, yes, I uh, mirror my fiance and she calls me out on it. <laughs> Good for her. Good on her. In the beginning, I was able to get away with it. And now she's just like, cut the shit. I don't know what you're doing, but you're doing something. Something sales. You just, just stop. And then, yeah, that's my life. But I love her, so. I've got a lot of feedback from my Chinese spouses that I've ruined their relationships uh, through my trainings. So that's just a thing. Like Stephen recently, yes, yeah, St Stephen was like, my girlfriend hates you because of what you taught me because I use it for evil. I didn't tell you to use it that way, Stephen, or Brian. I don't take responsibility. I'm like a bottle of Advil, all right? I. I'm not responsible. I feel like Advil is responsible. <laughs> no, if you decide analogy. to take a hundred Advil, I can't be responsible for what happens to you. Responsible. Recommended doses too. Mirrors. <laughs> Do you know where mirroring comes from? Where does it come from? No, no. Well, the correct answer is comes from. <laughs> oh, sorry, comes from? There you go, perfect. <laughs> Gonna like Chris head tilt. <laughs> Christopher Voss wrote a book called Never Split the Difference that highlights mirroring. He didn't create it, but he was the first person to popularize it. Uh, the whole idea is that when you mirror somebody, you're giving them their exact words, which makes them relate to you. It's like a psychological trick for someone to feel like you're kind of on their level. And even if you know that they're doing it to you, it's pretty hard not to respond. I, I'm pretty sure that at a certain point, Andrew was like, what the fuck? Like something's going on. But he just, he kept trying to explain himself though. That there's yeah. an element to it where you still want to keep going, even if you know it's a trick. Yeah, I don't know how I got home that <laughs> night. My mind was, I, I was gone. It was bad. It was, yeah. Let's never do that again, please. He made you Uber. You couldn't drive home. Couldn't even scooter. No, I rode a scooter home. Yeah, ah. I took a scooter. Yeah. Wait, yeah, I don't, so... I don't remember the rest of that night. <laughs> Traumatized. How, so how is it different from little kids during the repetition game? Because that's really annoying. Annoying? It's the same thing. You got mirrored, Brandy. I know. How's it feel? <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can see the cringe. It hurts. And then if you just be <laughs> quiet after the fact and have that awkward silence, you have to learn to love the awkward silence because someone's going to crack and whoever talks first loses. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Because, like, the whole point of it is to get somebody to explain themselves. 
and I think the whole part of the repetition game is you want someone to keep explaining themselves and then keep doing it to them to drive them insane. With marrying that, you only do it once. That's a really good point, actually. I never thought of it like that. I just, I feel like, I mean, as a child, that was one of my favorite games. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but it's fun because, yeah, you just get to annoy them. And uh, I never thought about it as, if they don't say anything else, like the game's over. So you want them to say more. Yeah, that's interesting. My favorite game was Mario. <laughs> yeah, I second that. I like Duck Hunt too. <laughs> Brandy's like, my favorite game was to psychologically terrorize the people around me. <laughs> I was a little sister, so it oh. comes with the territory. I was an only child, so I was just sad most of the time. <laughs> yeah, but you had imaginary friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were also sad. <laughs> we had therapy <laughs> sessions together. They were sad together. <laughs> well, I oh, think this has great. gone well. Thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> yeah. Got sad real fast. So, so people know what mirroring is. Uh, let's do a role play. Not it. Not it. There you go. Brian and no, I could do it. No, I could do it. We don't need to throw them both into the into the water. I'll. Well, do I'm it. not doing it. I'm, I'm just Brian. Do it. Just Brian. All right. All right, Brian. I'm a prospect. Prospect. Yeah, I want to buy Panda Doc. Okay. So. What made you come to Panda Doc? Um, yeah, so I downloaded your free e-signature plan and then I realized you guys do more than that. So I was kind of curious to see what that was all about. Curious? Yep, curious. Uh, so I, I, I'm not totally clear on all of your features, but I think you guys have templates and right now we're doing like a PDF upload, sign, scan kind of a thing. So I think that templates could be helpful for us, but I'm, I'm not totally sure. Understandable. How long is it currently taking you to get through sending out a document? Um, that's hard to estimate. I mean, I'd say that it could be anywhere from like an hour to maybe two hours. Two hours? Depending. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of time. I'm sorry, but that's a lot of time. Um, what could your reps be doing instead of spending two hours? Like if I could cut that time down to maybe like, I don't know, two minutes. Would they enjoy that? Two minutes? Hey, man, that sounds like a fairy tale. I don't believe you. You don't believe me? No. Is it because I'm a salesperson or I'm telling you something that you don't believe in? Uh, it's because you're a salesperson. Like, you're just going to try to sell me this, aren't you? No. I honestly don't care if you buy my software or not, considering this isn't even a real prospect. But that being <laughs> said, help me understand, like, didn't she say she wanted to buy? Oh, right. <laughs> she didn't want to buy. Scratch that. Disregard, disregard that. You that didn't take said, notes. <laughs> Cut. Right. That being said, Cut. Randy, how much, what could they be doing in their free time? If um, I, I gave them an hour and a half back, what would they be doing? Probably things that are more beneficial to me and my company. More beneficial? Yeah, like getting more customers. I mean, if there was more time in the day, we could get all the customers in the whole wide world. Okay. I like that. I like that. That's uh, definitely what PandaDoc could do. Increase your market share at 100% and you could quote me on that. That being said, how many customers do you, are you currently averaging? Uh, how many new customers are you currently averaging, say, give a month? Um, new customers in a month. Probably about 15. 15. Okay. And it's taking you two hours to send out the proposals? Yes. I mean, I mean max two hours. Maybe one to two is more okay. accurate. Fair to say one and a half, split the difference, go in the middle. Love it. Perfect. So it sounds like you're spending about an hour and a half on sending out these documents to actually acquire the company. If you had, let's say, an extra two full business days, for example, in a week to prospect, demo, and close, how many more clients do you think you could have? 
in a given month. Would that be 45? Be. At least double. At least double. Okay. And what would that do for your bottom line? Well, Brian, it would be good for it. I can say that much. Good for it? Good for it. In so far as that means more money. More money? <laughs> can I be done? Brandon, you can take I'll buy it. I'll else. buy it. <laughs> I promise. What is enterprise? I'll do it. Let's go. This goes again. This counts for my quote entertainment, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a close one. We'll Perfect. figure it out. Put it yeah, in. I'll give Can you I like 25 cents. <laughs> buy you a candy. Probably not the most candy. realistic prospect here, but they get the idea. Yeah. I felt like I was stuck in a nightmare listening to that, but like in a good way. A good nightmare. That was like a satisfying nightmare. Satisfying nightmare? Stop it. He's going to leave. Don't make him leave. <laughs> well, that feels like a good um, all-encompassing talk on mirroring. You got any other questions, Mr. Andy? No, man. Thank you, Brian, for coming on. Um, you know, for this short time, I've been a Panda Doc. You've been very helpful to me and my team and definitely seen you grow a lot, man. Having very, very good months. And Patrick, thanks for jumping on and antagonizing this. So definitely appreciate, appreciate it, guys. Of course. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, you guys, so much. Yep. Talk soon. Uh, soon? Oh, God. No more, dude. It's Friday morning. I have to. I have to get stuff done today. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> and see. <laughs>